you may. Alright. Uh, whatever's being in order, if we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. A Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, ladies. Madam Monitor, can we get a roll call of the members present, please? Council Member Wetton. I'm here. Council Member Graham. She's here. Council Member Graham. Here. <laughs> Council Member Jessen. Here. Council Member Larson. Here. Council Member Paparaz. Here. Council Member Rivas. Here. And Council Member Sims. Present. Seven present. Next thing on the agenda is the approval of the council minutes for September 24th and September 23rd. Has everyone had an opportunity to see them and review them before we take action? <laughs> Where's that third? Second. There's a motion and a second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor on the approval signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have it? First reading. Notice the taxpayers have proposed additional appropriation adjustment. Notice is hereby given the taxpayers of Porter County, Indiana, that the proper legal officers of Porter County, Indiana, will meet in the Porter County Government Administration Building located at 155 Indiana Avenue, Valparaiso, on November 19, 2019, at 5.30 p.m. to consider the following appropriation adjustments affecting county budgets for the year 2019 and to transact any further business which might come before the council. Porter County Substance Abuse Council Grant Fund 1148. Uh, one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Park Operating Fund eleven seventy nine six hundred and eight dollars. Recorders Perpetuation Fund eleven eighty nine salaries three thousand eight hundred dollars. FICA one thousand one hundred per two hundred dollars. Riverboat Fund eleven ninety one longevity one hundred seventy thousand one hundred and three dollars. FICA ten thousand seven seventy four and per fifteen thousand seven seventy three. Tax sale fees fund twelve oh three. Contractual services thirty thousand dollars, E nine one one surcharge fund twelve twenty two, eighty thousand seven hundred and ninety two and thirty eight cents, adult probation administ administrative fees fund two thousand, salaries a reduction of seventy five hundred, adult probation user fees fund twenty one oh one, salaries seventy five hundred, county user fee pretrial diversion fund twenty five oh three, inner fund transfer fifty thousand seventy two dollars and ninety two cents. Parks Sunset Hill Farm Education Center Fund, 49-19, contractual, $66,856. Taxpayers appearing at such meeting shall have a right to be heard thereon. The additional appropriations is finally made will be referred to the Indiana Department of Local Government Funds Finance. For those funds that are reviewed by the DLGF, the department will make a written determination as to the ability of the fund to support the appropriations made within 15 days of a receipt of a certified copy of the action taken signed by your bank. Auditor of Porter County, published November 8, 2019, in the Chesterton Tribune. Thank you, Vicki. We're going to jump out of order here real quick. I'd like to take the veteran services next. Hello. Hey, Jim. Hey. Let's uh, talk a little bit about this. And Dan and I have had a second to get together. And as you know, a lot of you know, Dan is quite the thespian, but he's also 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 has a history of service uh, for our military. And we wanted to start recognizing the citizens of Porter County who have served. Um, and, I, and, I, and, and conversations has taken place for quite some time. We decided that maybe an award ceremony during our council meetings would be appropriate. So um, with no further ado, I'll introduce Dan, and he can introduce Jim, and then maybe we can hear a little bit about our award recipients tonight. Yeah, so Jim, if you'd like to, maybe we'll take these. Come on up here. We'll go this way. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we'll do here is we've got three here today, yeah. and I would like Jim to yeah. say just a few words about each one, and we'll call them up. All right. Sure. All right. So let's start with. Uh, okay. I'd like to go ahead and thank uh, President Whitten, of course, and. Councilman Larson for initiating and supporting this uh, veterans recognition. And uh, tonight is the first time we get to go ahead and recognize people that have made such a difference in the veterans community in Porter County. Uh, that being said, would the Davis family come forward? Uh, Don Davis has been the past commander of the American Legion 94. He's currently the uh, 
chairman of our e-board. He's the liaison of the SAL, and uh, there isn't anything that Don hasn't done for the American Legion and the uh, aging community uh, at nursing homes in Porter County. So I'd like to present uh, to you on behalf of the County Council this award, Donald, for uh, all that you contributed to the veterans' family and community. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Say anything, Don? <laughs> no. The next award that the council wants to present is to Lori Muller. Will Lori come up, please? Lori comes from a, uh, a family of veterans. Her husband Joe served, and her sons have served in the military. Lori has been the CEO of the Pines Retirement uh, uh, Community here in Valparaiso for almost 20 years. She's going to retire, I believe, uh, next year. 2021. 2021. So uh, there isn't anything that Lori uh, hasn't um, done that uh, we're not so proud of uh, what she's uh, done to make such a difference. She's contacted uh, speakers uh, with PTSD from all over the country. Uh, provided us with uh, motivational movies and education uh, that make us do a better job with our interaction with our veterans. So I'm very proud to make sure that you are the first recipient of this honor. Constantly bestowing on on you, Gloria. This is a, a thank you from all of us here in Porter County for all that you've done. So thank you. Transfer? Yes. I'll make the motion on the transfer. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? There better not be. <laughs> Transfer's approved. Thank you so much, Jim. I really appreciate that. And I want to thank Jeff Larson for putting this together. That was really fantastic. We've been talking about it for a while. It's an important thing. We need to recognize our veterans. They're often uh, forgotten, and that's unconscionable. And as a veteran, I greatly appreciate. Uh, this recognition for those of service. And that goes for all of you in the audience. If you find someone that you think should come forward or we should honor, we would be more privileged to do that. So thank you for your time. Okay, next thing on the agenda is the commissioners. Ooh, two of them tonight. So, um, We've got a Commissioner's General Fund request, uh, a few transfers, 3000 1500 1000 uh, Funds are depleted. What's your pleasure with this? So moved. Second. And a second. Any uh, discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Let's have it. Uh, lit Fund, $100. Uh, 
from uh, Dusty Ware's who said it was like $150 to print this up um, to cover salaries to the end of the year for training of new secretary for facilities. And then we have a QMCAP development uh, CCD fund of $200,000 uh, to power. Funds are depleted. What's your pleasure? I'll make the motion on both. We have a motion and a couple of seconds on both. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I think, uh, Scott, you said there was something else that should be under commissioners. Uh, the E911. E911. So if we could kick over to the E911. The foundation budget fund transfer has been pulled. The commissioners take, have taken care of this. The only thing left is the surcharge fund, additional $80,782.38 other equipment funds for purchase and installation of one bi-directional amplifier, Valparaiso Courthouse and Juvenile Detention Center. What's your pleasure? Make the motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this request? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparad? Yes. Councilmember Rivas? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. And Councilmember Witten? Yes. Seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, Circuit Court, Judge Harper. So we've got a transfer of $5,000 from legal to hourly needed to pay for law clerk. What's your pleasure? Make a motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Seven. And a second. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes had. Some ask, is this it? This is your last one? Yeah, it is. My last one. What, 35 years? Oh, my wow. goodness gracious. Yeah. Well, we are going to, uh, we're going to miss you. That's Sorely right. miss. We're well, going to miss um, you. It's been a, my honor to serve. So you, uh, I've liked working with you. You know, you're a good group of people. Um, we work in a great community. You know, wonderful citizenry. So I think we're all really lucky to be able to. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. It's been an honor to get to work with you all. Yeah, it has. It's been a great honor. Thank you for your service over all these 35, 35 years. Wow. Yes. Wow. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, feels like five, but it is what it is. <laughs> it goes that way sometimes. Well, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. To Chair Brown. I'm coming to your party. I'm coming to your oh, party. We're all coming. <laughs> I'll be your party. Miss it. So, All right. Might be some country music. This might be. Thank you. Thank you. Sheriff, we've got a uh, task force transfer of $1,194 for motor vehicles data processing to cover monitor costs and then a transfer highway interdiction fund $35.55 to work. Motion to approve both. Second. Motion and a second on the floor for both. Any discussion? As long as you guys can catch Dan speeding with that radar. <laughs> I don't speed. I'm old. Um, we'll be watching. All in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. <laughs> Opposed? The ayes have it. Both transfers are approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Stormwater management. Just a few things. Got a transfer of 515 bucks and 875 bucks. Uh, to cover the shortage of bike and perp for the remainder of the year, another couple thousand dollars to auto truck and equipment to purchase the equipment for department, and then five hundred dollars to culverts. Second. Motion is second on all transfers. Yep. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Say for uh, saying aye. 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 Opposed? Transfers are approved. Thank you. Thank you. Treasurer. We have an additional of thirty thousand dollars to contractual services tax sale estimated fees for redemptions. All right now that tax sale is over, all the properties that have redeemed and have been sold at tax sale, where um, through the process they pay the hundred dollar fee, mm -hmm. that needs to get moved over from the other funds to mine so that I can pay the other. Got it. Uh, any questions about that? We'll make the motion. We have, a, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. 
Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparad? Yes. Councilmember Rivas? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Witten? Yes. And Councilmember Graham? Yes. Seven to zero. Thank you. I'm going to jump here a second. Let's go to the assessor. I think that Board of Elections is going to be a bigger discussion. The assessor's got a $374 uh, transfer request. Cover negative balance. Always a problem. Motion. For me. Second. <laughs> Motion and a second. Always a head scratcher uh, at the assessor's office. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Memorial Opera House. <laughs> I assume the show just about sold out. Uh, yes, yes it is, as a matter of fact. We had to add an extra performance and, you know. What role is Dan playing? Rules. I am the several. I am the, I am the prosecuting <laughs> attorney prosecuting Santa Claus. Okay. Yeah. He's the villain. <laughs> I tried to get them to rewrite the script because I'm not used to losing in court. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm deep in here. All right, we got a ten thousand uh, dollar transfer from advertising and marketing, and nineteen hundred from advertising. Motion on both. Yes. Second on both. They got to abstain from this. This is bringing it in, baby. Bring it in. No, it's not. Close for you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> Transfers approved. Um, that's it. Great. Thanks. <laughs> nice and then um, let's go to um, any other easy ones. Juvenile probation. Um, transfer three thousand dollars from consultants to travel, requesting transfer of funds to pay mileage expenses for remainder of nineteen. We have a motion. Is there a second? There's a second on the floor. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. No probations. Transfer is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, health department. The health fund transfer twenty five hundred dollars from equipment to vehicles. Additional is needed due to cost of seven mobile hotspots used by food, environmental, et cetera, et cetera. What's your pleasure? Make the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Well, yeah, I guess why. Sorry. It's okay. You can ask now. Why aren't we paying it on the Sheriff's Department anymore? Why is it? I'm sorry? Why aren't we going to pay it? Why isn't it going to be paid on the Sheriff's Department anymore? That was all transferred November of last year, I guess. They just don't want to pay for it anymore. They just don't want to pay for it anymore, no. so they free up some of their more money. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. Well, that's for sure. Thank you. Have a good evening. Um, let's go to Porter County Substance Abuse Council. $180,000 to grant fund. Grant funding out to community from countermeasures fees received motion. from the courts. We have a motion and a second. How's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. Very good. Uh, any questions? Hearing none, let's have a roll call, please. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Pepperad? Yes. Councilmember Rebus? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Witten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. And Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Seven to zero. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's good. That's why you're the man. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, I think we've knocked out a lot of the easy stuff. Um, let's go to the Board of Elections and Registration. Dan, that's not easy? Might be. Big numbers to scare me. Okay, so we've got several things on here. Two transfers and a, a Form 144, which was an add-on because we've got an issue that we wanted to address. Um, so why don't we start with the transfer, the $62,000 from maintenance agreements to motor vehicles. Transfer to purchase uh, of utility vehicles. What, uh, what questions do you guys have of this? Do you want to get a motion first? Or just yeah, motion. We can have the motion. I'll do a motion. We have, a we have a motion and a second. Now let's have some discussion. Now, several of you had some questions about this, I think, so ask away. Are you talking to me? My question, 
<laughs> and I want to thank you for your your work and everything your department did this last uh, election was was great. My question on on the vehicle is, where do you plan on having having this vehicle going? As far as what will it be doing, or where will it be? Is stored? it going to be serving? Yeah, it will be stored at the highway department. The one on Route Two. Okay. Maybe for the benefit of myself and others, give us uh, if you could give us just a presentation or some more information on why you're requesting what you're requesting and what okay, you so intend what to we're do. And requesting is in essence. Um, like a, a, similar to a V-Line bus or one of the senior center buses or something like that, it has stairs and a lift on it. Um, the purpose of the vehicle will be actually multi-purpose. We're going to take it out into the community and do voter registration drives. We'll also use it to deliver the equipment to all of our early vote sites. If a machine goes down, we will have um, a vehicle in order to take more uh, equipment out to the site. And, um, no, no, we're, we're listening. Oh. And then on day of election, same thing. This past year, we have been able to partner with the coroners. And so we borrowed their vans for the primary. Um, we would unload their gurneys, store them in our equipment room, load it full of our equipment to take the classes, and then um, again, switch it back out, park the van. It was not necessarily the easiest for the coroners. They're used to be able to take their vehicle home with them and also not have equipment, election equipment, going back and forth to different places. Um, so we have done, and then in the general, we went ahead and we had to rent uh, a budget vehicle in order to do that. So it's making it so we'll be able to have our own vehicle to be able to transport our own equipment without having to inconvenience other departments. And you're talking as if this vehicle would be like a, uh, have multi seats in it? No, so we are not having well, it's like a van. Thing. It'll be like a V-line. I have some pictures if you guys want to see them. Dan, you know what the V-line is. Didn't you follow those around town? He's got his picture on him now. Thanks, Dan. The V-line has seats. We're having the seats removed. The other thing that we'll be able to use it for is the local voting location. We'll have to advertise it the same way we do early vote sites, but we can take people vote when it's convenient for them, which is you know, such as the early voting. So we'll be able to take it to highly populated locations. Such as? Such as grocery stores, football games. Um, we can take it out to the fair and run our own. We can't do it on election because it's not during voting time. But we can take it to different locations. We can take it down to the theater. We can take it to the couch. Places that don't normally get the benefit of an early vote, we can take it there during highly populated Events, so advertise that and they'll be able to cast their vote by while they're doing their weekly shopping. That's um, legal? Mm -hmm. Is and that the state allows that? We advertise it during the same way we would advertise a satellite location. You gotta have judges and inspectors. We would it would come in as a bipartisan team. So there will be two seats in the vehicle. Instead of a V line where it has a whole bunch of seats, we'll have the driver's seat and then we'll have one back seat. We'll also have a lift so People in wheelchairs, or so it's easier to get our equipment up and down on it. Um, but they'll be able to, a two person team, just like at an early vote center. You'll have a Democrat and a Republican. You'll have the e poll book, because I also, in addition, have added electricity being added into it. So they'll be able to hook up. The machines have battery backup. The e poll book has battery backup. But in case it needs to be charged, they'll be able to plug in, run the vehicle to create the energy. Electric and then uh, be able to catch it. Is this done anywhere else in the state? No. How many other counties are doing this? It's up for discussion in a few counties, but none in the state of Indiana. There is some in Illinois and other places around the country, but not in the state of Indiana. My but question is, is uh, how, you know, if you would run into some difficulties with it being used for voting. I think that, you know, I like the idea of transportation for equipment and different things like that, but to actually use it as a voting, I think I see where there'd be problems. Yeah, how do you how do you secure how do you secure it? Okay, I mean you're gonna go to the grocery you're gonna go to Walmart on Saturday morning? We could. All right, then you gotta secure the machine. Who's gonna do all that? Inside. 
side. Okay. The two-person team. No, no, I, I mean, when you, you, you go there from 8 to noon. Right. Then what? Then you take it and deliver the machines back to the county building, or to our storage, and take the ballots and put them to the same place and reconcile the same as the satellite locations currently do. And how are you going to work with the uh, people running for office in that? Are they going to have to follow the same rules with the... Uh, yes. They're going to have a rope out. Yes, they'll be a 50-foot shoot and everything. All right. How, how would the... Uh, we can't tell them no. Will they want to come? That's up to them, but we can't tell well, them no. If I was the candidate, I'd be there. The ballots will be transported the same way they're transported right now. The satellite locations, their uh, ballots are driven by the by the satellite workers to the administration building and reconciled and stored here. So it's the exact same. So process. this idea had to originate from somewhere. Is there another municipality that you saw this at? Where you guys I spent a lot of time going and seeing what's being done in different areas and what can be implemented here in, a, in order to make the turnout higher and make voting more engaging. And um, this is one of the things that was discussed. It has been discussed in the seats program, um, which is run um, by VSTOP and the election division. We have one of our, our directors currently taking the class now. Um, and she'll have to do a final project at the end of it. This was done there. It's done. Um, is your board entirely on board, for lack of a better term? No one has voiced opposition, but I didn't ask for their permission exactly. I did, so that hasn't been I asked. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell them. 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 I didn't Conceptually, this would start when all early voting starts one month out? Yes. All right, so it would go out every day? We have to make this custom. We would have to have it advertised the same way early vote is. So whatever our schedule is going to be, we would have to have that schedule set and advertised um, before April, before early voting started. That way everybody would be aware, all the candidates would be aware, um, the state election board would be aware. It's the same way we have to advertise our early vote. It has what? to be approved by the election so board. Have you run this past the election board? What did they say? I told them we were all coming, and they're more than welcome to come. I, the last so it has been, been before the, them. Yes, it has. The last two election boards. Did they vote for it? We didn't take a vote. Nobody voiced opposition. I'm saying now, In my clerk's report, I gave them a full explanation of what's going on. I'm saying down so, yes, state, aware. down state, yes. where we're attempting to do Yes, I've talked to the state election board, and they're... Completely in favor of it. Would you wrap the vehicle with some stuff yes. like mm -hmm. come and vote? We would yeah. use our advertising budget so we can have. I, mean, really I actually appreciate what you're doing. I, I mean, it's a cool idea. Yeah. No question. We have to increase voter turnout. Right. Um, it, it's terrible year after year. So, yeah. The question is, uh, what would happen with your traveling boards? How did that? Don't they go <laughs> out to like nursing homes or different they places? They go to nursing homes or um, bedridden individuals. So they, so they don't go there for just anybody that no. wanted to vote? No. They have to be homebound. So well, what's the benefit to this? And I know it's probably obvious, but then so you have early voting, there's early voting sites, there's Portage, there's Valpo, there's Hebron, there's Chesterton, and then we have this van. So what's the benefit of the van? What's the, what makes it $62,000 better than all the other spots? Our early voting this year was 8.30 to 3.30. So if you have to come to Chicago, if you work shift work, you're not voting. If you're a teacher, you can't make those times. It doesn't matter how many locations you put them. The, it, the hours were 8.30 or 3.30 or Saturday. A lot of people don't want to stand in a huge long line on Saturday. So if we give them another option that's closer to them and more convenient for them, they're more likely to. Well, uh, yeah, but uh, to me it seems like a, it, it might be a bit difficult to determine where, yeah, where, where the bus who determine, goes. Who determines where the bus goes on Saturday? The election department. Huh? The election department and ultimately the election board will approve it the same way they do satellite locations now. So would you go out on a Saturday? To, would you go out on a Saturday morning? Yes, we could. That's the retail day. But if you if you is early voting open on Saturday? The last two. Should we expand early voting to accommodate what you just said? Hours 
as compared to $62,000 for an accident waiting to happen? Well, I think there's another component to it, though. That's She's got to move equipment, too. Right. I mean, she needs a vehicle to move equipment. Well, we can run, we can run trucks understand. all day long. Exactly. You know, I understand that. That's not, yeah, I'm not, I'm past that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Renting well, vehicles time and time again is not convenient for anyone. You have to go get the vehicle between a certain time frame. Hopefully well, yeah, but spending $62,000 or something that's used twice a year every, every fourth year isn't. Well, it's uh, there's a price to pay for democracy. That's it's right. No, I agree with that. That's why budget hurts got trucks all day long. Right, and if the elections department was ran like it was in the past, I completely agree with you. But we are taking the equipment to every single Under his work. location. We're taking it to every single class. Okay. So to rent the vehicle and take it back and take it back and take it back and take it back, it's completely inconvenient and we're spending an awful lot of time running and renting the vehicle. Has there been any research done on, we're doing a lot with Enterprise now on some of these leased vehicles. Have we looked into a possibility of leasing yeah. something like that? They were not, they were more expensive than where we went this past time, even with, because of the type of vehicle. You have I, to have such a high clearance. I, I, I certainly appreciate the effort um, because uh, to get more people registered to vote extremely important. To get more people at the polls on election day is, is even more important, or have them early vote. Um, but it seems like uh, you know the parameters of what could be set up. You know, I, I'm struggling with whether it's truly a cargo van, or whether it's an early registration van, or if it's a voting van. And if it's a voting van, then it seems like there's more complications because of you have to have the inspectors and you have to have no. you have to no. advertise For where it's at. Site, you have to have two people. Just like right now, we have two people at each satellite location. That's it. You don't have to have so two people in the van going to Walmart or mm -hmm. wherever. I would um, like to address what Bob said, and that I mean, is that money well spent? Could we do more Saturday voting? Could we offer more locations on early voting with much less uh, expense to the county? Um, I get what you're doing, and I think that's a great thing because millennials would love the idea of being able to hop in that bus and vote. I think that would be cool for them. They'd really like it, but I, I don't know if that's going <laughs> to resolve the issue of not getting that many votes out. But that's ultimately for the election board. Like, right. I'm asking to transfer funds right. for this vehicle. This vehicle will be used for multi-use for multiple purposes. So ultimately, it would be up to the election board on whether or not we use it for voting, or if we just use it for registration drives, or if we just use it to transport. Well, and that's why I think our point is I mean, we can use it for a lot of things. Sixty-two thousand dollars on leasing a vehicle or renting a vehicle could go a long way, and I think that was an, an honest question. No, it is a very good question. It's very inconvenient. I I would like to know for sure and for certain what exactly this vehicle is going to be used for. I know what you've told us. I totally agree. Your vision sounds great. Right. But I want to know, you just said, well, it's up to the election board whether it's used for. Well, I want to know what that, right. how that right. sentence is. Not happened. one election board member has voiced time. opposition to me. Yes. If they have said something to you, Have they voiced intention to, to use it? Yes. See, so here's the thing. Have I, you had a vote? Has the election board actually voted on it? We did not vote on it. I gave the information in my, in my clerk's report. Nobody asked for a vote. Everybody was completely aware that we were coming and what we were doing for. Everybody knew when. Uh, I, uh, could I, we, I, could we table this? Because yeah. they don't vote on any of our expenses. Well, could we table this until you, you came back with them with 100% approval on what we're doing with this? And we don't have another meeting until January, so we'd have to encumber the funds. Oh. But that's completely doable. Thanks. Driving this, would you need a CDL? No, a because it's less than 15 passengers, right. so you would just need a normal license. I understand. I, I, I could half buy into your argument about transporting equipment. That's a, that's a flyby. The safety of the voting booth, being on wheels, sort of bothers me. Just running around wherever they're going. I, I don't know. Why would you have it done by uh, Pony Express? Or oh, we uh, yeah. 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 Well, but in early voting, it's a fixed location, doesn't move, the hours are established, et cetera, et cetera. And if, if we're after, it, what Jeff said, if we're going to do anything, do we expand early voting, which seems to be more popular than anything else? It seems to be gaining popularity. Should we have evening hours? I can tell you that I'm in favor of expanding early voting. Is the rest of the board? I don't know. That's not a discussion that we've had. 
it. So I think that's what he's discussing it in 2020. But part of just the discussion in 2020 so will be, this if we okay. have this, where is it going? I want a motion to table this. Second. Motion is second to table. Table till when? I mean, that's me. It's on the table. At least get the election for. Uh, oh, we're all in by yeah. I, 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 I think it's. I think it'd be important to have uh, uh, them express what their feeling is on it, whether or not they're in agreement. You know, not saying they're against it uh, isn't necessarily saying they're for it. And then more importantly, what would the intention be? What would the election board plan to do with it? Is I think what we're looking for in terms of uh, specificity. Um, and then I think also what might help as we bring this up later uh, is some information on these communities that are using it somewhere throughout the country, right. you know, exactly what have they done, what kind of success have they had, what have they used it for, what, uh, you know, uh, just to give us a better idea or indication as to how beneficial it might be to determine whether or not it's worth the $62,000 expense. The other question I'd have is when you go from a, biz, a business uh, or organization to organization, like <clears throat> Bob has a brick and mortar facility, who's, who's the liability pull back on when that vehicle's operating in that parking lot? Is it Walmart or whoever else is there? We are providing a service there, but is the county going to be liable for access to the vehicle? People that own the structure that we're at, are they going to be? There's a lot of questions that I'd like to, uh, I'd probably like to answer before we could go forward. That's just my opinion. Jessica, you're a member of the election board? Mm -hmm. All right. And you've had discussions with other members? Yeah. And you guys discuss these intents mm -hmm. of voter registration drives around the county, which is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Just expanding and trying to get more people to vote, a great idea. Moving the equipment, we need it. I mean, so well, I applaud what you're doing there. I mean, this is thinking out of the box. This is good. You yeah. need a vehicle. I hate to so, we all. I have to. I, there's a motion to table on the floor, and that takes precedent. I, uh, yeah, I withdraw my first motion and motion to You don't table. have to withdraw it. Right. So let's vote on the motion to table, and then we can get further into discussion. Okay. All in favor of the motion to table, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It is tabled. So it will be brought back up if the council takes it off the table at our next meeting, which I suspect they will. So we need to have that information. And from my perspective, I just like to know a little more logistically exactly what the vehicle is going to be used for. Uh, I like all the things you've said, but I want to make sure that's where it's going to end up. And I would like a little more information on how you're going to advertise, how you're going to get people there. I mean, that's we have a hard enough time getting folks early vote at a known location. Now we're going to have a mobile site that we're going to have to get information out to folks. I want to, I'm kind of curious how you're going to do that. I think you can do it. I'm just kind of curious how. Mm -hmm. so. I, I don't think there's a single one of us that want to stand in the way of that. I just, I well, six of you just did. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> Mike, I am 100% behind you in having it for moving equipment, uh, early voting, everything. But actually, I, I'm a little bit concerned about the voting and the uh, security of, of the. Uh, I know that you would. Be very careful in handling the voting and that, but I'm just I'm a little concerned actually about somebody saying, "Hey, there's we can go vote," and actually having you guys being mauled by a crowd. <laughs> I I wish that's what would happen, but I think there's a lot of concern about where you would pull up for the responsibility of who owns the business. Um, I think there's a lot of unanswered questions. That uh, I can see it for trap for transporting. For doing almost 90% uh, of what you what you talked about. Well, if you needed a van just for moving the equipment, you right. wouldn't need something. They don't have anything to yeah, encumber it with. Yeah. They're going to lose money. To get the to, to get the machines into a vehicle, they need to be standing up straight. Yeah, no, you need a truck with a lift gate. Right. Yeah. Cube, a cube van with a lift gate would suffice right. so for moving the equipment. Yeah. I think we're done with this. And there won't be any encumbrance of money. I mean, you don't have anything to encumber it with. I mean. So. Right. I, and that's. But I don't. Personally, the part of it I liked the most was the use of it for early voting. Right. Ironically, that's the part I really excited about. Yeah. I don't care about the other stuff. And that's the one I'm interested in. So, I'm I'm excited to see where you go with that. But you know, if you get to dig a little deeper in the well with the election board, come back, give us kind of a. Well, we didn't think we needed to vote because the election board does not vote on any of our expenses. Understood. So. Got it. We're so. In. 
Got a motion on the second? That's over. We already voted on that. Oh, the transfer of $3,000 from maintenance to overtime. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. There's a 144 that's been presented to us. And Jessica, why don't you tell us um, in 50 the, words or less what uh, office was moved from the Riscotti building into the new building, and there's currently no um, security over there. So if somebody goes and pays their fines, they now know that there's a chunk of money sitting over there, no one securing it, and um, the majority of people who come to the clerk's office are not happy. So the girls would feel a little bit better if they had um, a security. Of course, security is very busy with the actual courts that are in the opposite building. So I suggested that I would pay for security out of my budget with the understanding that I will stop paying for it for that building when the clerk's office goes back to the courthouse. Other departments are interested in having security as well. That's up to them to figure out after. And, and so the reason for the 144 is if you're got, if you if you are paying security, but we pay security per hour here, you don't have an, a high enough uh, um, allowable per hour Correct. in her current 144 to pay security. So I think the request has been to, for this 144 to allow her up to $23 uh, dollars per hour to pay a security officer. Did they, they, they give you a timeline on moving back? from two to four months. Early voting starts there in April, so we need to be out of that room because that's where early voting will take place. Do you need a motion on that, Jim? Yes, please. Motion. There's a motion to approve the 144 as presented. Is there a second? Second. And there's a second. Any further discussion? Do you estimate how much it's going to cost you? This is ba this is because of the construction. Yes. Please let us know at the end how much it costs. So for a point of reference for me, uh, Jessica, how much money, and not for the criminals out there, how much money yeah. are we talking about that would be at the office at any given time? <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell my very how much money we have? Well, let me ask you this. I assume there's a safe. Do we have safes? We just purchased And can you give us a combination of that safe? Mike. Mike. Okay. Mike. I got you. Um, we, need, we need to be aware also that this is only for 2019. If we've proven it has to be added to the salary That's right. Uh, if it once it goes into 2020, I'll also need that added into my general fund budget because all my hourly went to the Won't the you budget. be back though in the regular building? <laughs> no. Anywhere from two to four months. So we're hoping well, we'll, address we'll address it. We'll address it. We'll deal with it. Let me get a roll call on this, please. Uh, Councilmember Paparaz? Yes. Councilmember Rivas? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Whitten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Jessen? Yes. And Councilmember Larson? Yes. Seven to zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Awesome idea. Great idea. The rear do parks? No. Parks and the. Uh, Okay, so we've got the uh, general fund transfer request of forty-eight seventy-five eighty-five cents and five thirty-two and fifteen cents due to the change in the program director salary that was modified in late eighteen after the nineteen budget had already been submitted to DLG. What is your pleasure with this tra these transfers? Make the motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. $608 to contractual attorney for litigation. $608? Yeah, I think it was about 15 minutes. Where's this guy from the Correspondence uh, in School of PCI Repair and Law? Uh, all right, $608. Can you pass his name along to us? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For sure. We have a motion for the $608 attorney fee. Uh, we have our arrow. <laughs> 10 hours. Uh, yeah, 10 hours, all right. Uh, do you have a motion, Jeff, yes. to make a motion for a second? Second. 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 Uh, roll call, please. 
Councilmember Rivas. Yes. Councilmember Sims. Yes. Councilmember Witten. Yes. Councilmember Graham. Yes. Councilmember Chesson. Yes. Councilmember Larson. Yes. And Councilmember Paparazzi. Yes. Before we get off that topic, uh, can we find out how much is in that account, 39510 or what's been expended so far this year? Where it's going into, you want to know what the attorney's fees have been? For the year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So far they Oh man. Three thousand. I see I see the play here. And they have a balance in that line item of two thousand three hundred and sixty three. Do we have all is that current? Are there more bills all coming then? Yeah, this, well, this 608 should represent the final invoice. The case is now closed, so I'm not sure why there's an unexpected, unexpended balance unless we haven't paid the. This is including anything that might be in the accounts payable as well. Okay. Yeah, this is actually need the addition. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Parks. Uh, SHF, EDU, Center, additional 66856, to contractual balance of architectural administration agreement for new building at the Sunset Hill Farm County Park. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Witten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparad? Yes. And Councilmember Sims? All those, yeah, yes, thanks. Thanks, I mean, of course you do. Oh. She calls him twice? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm sorry. Leave us all, yes. That's what it's going to do. Yeah. I'm just learning. Present. All right. I'll vote for Mike. Okay. Don't probation. I apologize. Oh, it was a good question. The great building, Walker. So we have a couple of things here. We've got a uh, reduction of 7,500 salaries, budget adjustments to correspond with corrected 144 changes, and then 144 uh, with a series of uh, zeroed outs. Correction motion. 144. Second. Done after October, effective with pay period 22, with a motion and second. On all? Just yes. on the top. Yeah. Just on the top? Yeah, not the user piece. So you just want, oh, he, I meant. Is the motion just on the no? Reduction? The motion's on the reduction and the 144 from admin fees funds. Correct. Correct. Second agrees. All right. Discussion. Roll call. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. No, What's, what, what is the motion on? From the reason uh, reduction reason form 144 to reason not to adult just the request for, uh, on the adult probation admin fees fund. Both, both tied together. Right. Not the user fees fund. We haven't gotten to that portion yet. Right. We're just doing the top to reduction. That is right. correct. Are we doing the 144 at the same time? Yes. Okay. Roll call, please. Where are we doing? Councilmember Witten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparad? Yes. Councilmember Rivas? Yes. And Councilmember Thank Sims? You. Yes. And the second part of this is the other side of this, right. where the money's going. Right. So we've got the user's fee fund, additional 7500 to salaries, and the 144 is accordingly. What's your pleasure? Make the motion. There's a motion. Second. And a second. This is, this is moving out of the admin fee to the user fees. That is correct. So they're going for, so the chief guy is going from 24 to 33, but he's not really. He's already being paid that. Well, it's part of the new... What we, what we passed, yes. Well, I mean, this, this is not a race. No, but I'm saying, is this affecting uh, next year or just, no, just so go back this year? Okay. Right. We're just changing the account. Right, okay. I just want to make sure you know, you know how double probation is. Uh, <laughs> That's why I split it, Bob, so you can right. ask. Thank you. Questions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a long day. Um, so we're just following the money here. So uh, can I get a roll call on this, please? Yes, Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Justin? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparad? Yes. Councilmember Rebus? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. And Councilmember Witten? And, and, yes. And for the record, <laughs> I think adult probation is fine and doing a great job. I, I have a question. <laughs> yes. Next year, when, let's say, Dan reaches a milestone and is entitled to a raise, is that already figured in your budget? I don't get paid out of a budget. I know. I'm using you as an example because it's so easy to pick on you. 
Like, let's say he reached his 16th year. Show of hands. Anybody know what the last five is? The probation officer, when he reaches a milestone, he gets a big jump, theoretically. That is figured on, let's say, June 1st. Is that in your budget? Yes. Okay, thank you. And just to clarify, I'm not being hired by a probation officer. All right, thank you very much. Have a good Thank you. Oh, you never know, Dan. Yes. Well, I know. Um, so let's go to the prosecutor. What do we got left? We got yeah. quarters. We got some. Oh, just back there. That's it. Really, the salary ordinance. Yes. Of course. So what we've got, hello, Mr. Prosecutor, how are you, sir? Very good. Thank uh, you very much. Thank, thank you for joining us. So we've got a couple of things here. One is the County Use of Fund Transfer 450394. Uh, contractual services to salary 345, contractual service to FICA 505, contractual services to motion on the transfer. We have a motion second. on the floor and a second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Transfer is approved. We have a counter user free pre pretrial diversion fund additional 50,000 to <coughs> interfund transfer. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. And uh, any discussion on this one? Yeah, Gary, if you just help us understand the expenditures determined to be unreimbursable through the federal grant. <coughs> this all, I think, goes back this to is like 2015. Is this the insurance thing? This is the insurance. <coughs> where um, I remember the insurance for the employees was meant to be, um, or tried to be used as a matching uh, part of the grant, and the grant disallowed that. And so I think this covers like 2015, 16, 17, or uh, we would, we have uh, corrected that because we are now using interns and we um, impart a certain hourly rate to them, but they are in effect free to us. But we can offset uh, the matching part of our grant with them, um, and they um, they're supplied to us from IUN. And frankly, this is a problem that Thank was you. festering and not addressed, and it just got bigger and bigger and Clean bigger. Gary inherited. Clean up. Yeah, yeah. So I think Vicky did the math, and that's where ultimately the number came from. Awesome. What's your pleasure? Yes, we you. have a motion to second on this already. Yes. yes. Uh, any other questions? Nope. Roll call. Councilmember Jessen. Yes. Councilmember Larson. Yes. Councilmember Paparad. Yes. Councilmember Rivas. Yes. Councilmember Sims. Yes. Councilmember Witten. Yes. And Councilmember Graham. Yes. Seven to zero. And Gary is going to come back to us in January to address uh, employee issues, employee yes. pay, employee status. Uh -huh. yes. uh, Councilman Rebus and myself had the opportunity to meet with uh, Gary uh, this month to kind of go through a little bit of what's uh, been happening in his office. He inherited quite a bit of uh, problems. We're trying to help him get through it, but I've encouraged uh, Gary uh, to uh, come back to us in January with a proposal to address some of these issues and we can talk it through then. Give us different options. Uh, you know, we have a we have a working prosecutor here, and I'd like to make sure that we at least address some of the concerns. Yeah, and honestly, I'm very grateful to be the prosecutor. I, I love my job. I love going to work every day. The people I work with are fantastic. I, I just love every one of them. And uh, if you've been reading the newspapers, uh, they've been doing a great job. Um, and uh, credit um, the task force and the police officers that were assigned to that task force. Uh, for the most recent guilty verdict in the uh, Christopher Diller case. Well done. Uh, so you can be very proud of the work that's being done by the police and the uh, the people in our office. Um, well, and given the press history on that case, yeah. your team did a good job bringing that around. Yeah. Uh, it really it was it was so much to do with the police work involved in this case, honestly. So thank you very much for right. being here. Love being the prosecutor. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, let's talk about the recorder. You want to talk about him? Well, he's here. <laughs> so we got we've got a couple of a uh, couple of easy things here, and then we're going to address something with our attorney. But um, we have a perpetuation fund additional thirty eight hundred, eleven hundred, and two hundred to replace funds due to employee status change, pay off and vacation time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What's your pleasure? Motion. Second. Uh, you want to include the eight hundred fifty dollars yeah, transfer? Let's just grab it all from yes. There. All right. We have an additional transfer. Um, any discussion? Roll call, please. 
Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparad? Yes. Councilmember Rebus? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Witten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. And Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Seven is zero. Before we bounce back to uh, what we have to do with the council, let's talk about what you've got for us uh, with respect to uh, the uh, report. If you, if the council remembers, at the uh, during budget session, the recorder, uh, in conjunction with the council, uh, made a request for uh, a portion of the recorder's expenses to be paid from the perpetuation fund, which was ultimately approved in seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. There were some additional monies that were taken out of there as well, or that were requested to be taken or paid out of there. In the Statute requires, the law requires that monies that are paid out of the perpetuation fund have to be requested by the recorder by way of an affidavit, and then the council has to then vote on that uh, and hence the, uh, and approve an ordinance, hence the ordinance which I emailed to everyone. So also, so we have in front of us here now, Harold, if I may jump in yep. here, is we've got the affidavit and we've got the ordinance that we've asked Harold to prepare doing just exactly what he was describing. So what I'd like to get from you is to begin with a motion on the ordinance adoption motion, request. Motion to adopt. Second. By title only, I hope? Yes. yes. Uh, so ordinance number 19, whatever it is, an ordinance adopting request to pay an identi identifiable portion of recorder's 2020 expenses for perpetuation fund. Can I get a roll call on this, please? Okay. Councilmember Paparad. Yes. Councilmember Rebus. Yes. Councilmember Sims. Yes. Councilmember Witten. Uh, yes. Councilmember Graham. Yes. Councilmember Jessen. Yes. And Councilmember Larson. Yes. And since it's an ordinance, Harold, I, I believe we need two readings on this. Can we suspend the rules and have the second reading tonight? We can. Can I get a motion to suspend the rules for second reading? Second. Second. A motion and second. a second. Second. This motion has to be unanimous to pass. Can I get a <laughs> roll call? <laughs> on the motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Yeah, we need a, I need a roll call on that. that roll call. <laughs> yes. Councilmember well, Rebus? <laughs> Councilmember Rebus? Yes. Okay. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Witten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. And Councilmember Paparad? I wanted to ask a question, but we never got to it. It went so fast. That's how we roll. Well, then you might get a no vote listed. You wanted this! <laughs> There's no dollar amount listed in the ordinance <coughs> or the affidavit. Is there supposed to be? No. It's in our minutes. It, no, and I specifically okay. handled... No, it's not required by statute. Okay. As long as it's identifiable and because it was identified during the budget okay. session. that's fine. I would answer a vote. Yep. Yes. All right. So we have our motion to suspend the rules has been uh, approved on uh, unanimous votes. Now I would entertain or ask for a motion, motion. to approve on second reading. Second reading, please. Second. second. Motion and a second. This does not need to be unanimous. Uh, can we get a roll call on the motion to approve on second reading? Councilmember Sims. Yes. Councilmember Witten. Yes. Councilmember Graham. Yes. Councilmember Jessen. Yes. Councilmember Larson. Yes. Councilmember Paparad. <clears throat> yes. And Councilmember Rita. Yes. Seven to zero. Chuck, we really appreciate the spirit of, of cooperation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yep. Have a good one. Thanks, Chuck. Happy holidays, everybody. You too. Yeah. You too. Thanks, Council, we have additional. This is the riverboat money on the seventy. So we have three additionals here. I assume your motion's in all three. Yes. Motion is second. Can I get a roll call, please? Councilmember Retton. Yes. Councilmember Graham. Yes. Councilmember Jessen. Yes. Councilmember Larson. Yes. Councilmember Paparaz. Yes. Councilmember Rivas. Yes. And Councilmember Sims. Yes. Seven to zero. Second reading. Okay. Whereas it has been determined that it is now necessary to appropriate more money than was appropriated in the annual budget, therefore be it resolved by the Porter County Council of Porter County, Indiana, that for the expenses of the taxing unit, the following additional sums of money are hereby appropriated out of the funds named and for the purposes specified, subject to the laws governing the same. Porter County Substance Abuse Council Grant Fund, $180,000. Park Operating Fund, 608. Recorders Perpetuation Fund, $5,100. 
Riverboat Fund, $196,650. 196650 Tax sale fees fund, $30,000. Adult probation admin fees fund, a reduction of seventy five. dollars Adult probation user fees fund, $75,000. County User Fee Pre-Trial Diversion Fund, $50,072.92, and Parks Education Center Fund, $66,856. And that concludes second reading. Thank you, Madam Honor. Can I get a motion on second motion. reading? We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. A roll call, please. Councilmember Graham? Yes. Councilmember Jetson? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Pepperad? Yes. Councilmember Rebus? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. And Councilmember Whitten? We hit? Yes. Yes. Seven zero. Um, attorney, do we have anything else for another no, other one to address? Uh, Vicki, I believe you have the salary ordinance. Yes. This uh, needs to be adopted before the end of the year by state statute, and all of you should have received the email that had the draft language that was suggested by Councilmember Papara that you asked that we put together that basically gives the department heads some flexibility in uh, filling vacancies at a lower pay than what's in the salary ordinance. But the language um, that, that I included in the proposal is that they would still have to come before you, the council, to ratify their decision. Okay. Motion to approve salary Order. ordinance 2020. There's a motion and a second on the floor to approve the 2020 salary ordinance. Can I get a roll call, please? Yes. Councilmember Jessen? Yes. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Paparaz? Yes. Councilmember Rivas? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Witten? Yes. And Councilmember Graham? Yes. So I Seven assume zero. this also needs a second reading. We need to do it by the end of the year, so maybe we'll deal with it now. Can I get a motion, motion. to suspend the rules? Second. For a motion to second the floor to suspend the rules on for second reading. Uh, all in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Can I now get a motion to approve the 2020 salary ordinance on second reading? Motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve on second reading. Roll call, please. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Pepperad? Yes. Councilmember Rivas? Yes. Councilmember Sims? Yes. Councilmember Whitten? Yes. Councilmember Graham? Yes. And Councilmember Jessen? Yes. 7-0. Do we and have can any I ask a point of order that yeah. did not include the clerk twenty three thousand because I thought you said that you'd come back and address that. Okay, very good. So anything else we need to deal with tonight, ladies and gentlemen? We're not having a meeting in December, correct? Yeah, so as as it stands, I yes. Yes, we're not. That went through. It went through. It did. We, yeah. took, through, we took care of it. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Were you sitting here all night for that? <laughs> uh, anything else uh, that we need to address tonight? Uh, December meeting. So as it stands, uh, a lot of times we don't have a meeting in December because of the holidays. I don't necessarily think we need to this year. But um, if something comes up that requires our Attention, we can always call special meeting and come together. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Great. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Have a good evening. Have a good Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a good